there are always singer songwriters looking for places to play. And believe it or not, there are places looking for singer songwriters and to be able to put them together and and make it work. I mean, that is satisfaction for me. Four months short of 79 My memory's failing But I still remember Some of what I had done was wrong You ask me so I'll tell you The best I recollect Because I have no children For the truth to carry on Arrest warrants named me, many men defamed me, but the 80s were some rough years, too bad so many died. I did not hold with killing, but I was more than willing to win a fight with anyone, or at least know that I tried. seem peculiar of the good things that I did it's that one deed will be remembered when I'm gone but I said what I've said I had done what I had done in the past like a river has rolled on In those times and places, I only tried to make some money. I did my life and lovers the very best that I knew how. But some men would not abide me when the badges stood behind me. They preferred to do their dealing what the law would not allow. You see, guns were banned in Tombstone, but the Clantons and McLowrys and young Billy Claiborne, they didn't see things quite that way. They put up a squabble, Billy Clanton pulled his coat for battle, and I did what I had to at OK Corral that day. seem peculiar of the good things that I did it's that one deed will be remembered when I'm gone but I said what I said and I done what I done and the past like a river has rolled on well they killed my brother Morgan they wounded Brother Virgil I knew they would escape me Beneath the shelter of the law So I tracked each one that hunted us And I did what any man would do I sent them straight to hell Now I'll speak of it no more Don't it seem peculiar of the good things that I did It's that one damn deed Will be remembered When I'm gone But I said what I said And I done what I done And the past, like a river Has rolled on Yeah, I said what I said And I done what I done in the past, like a river, has rolled on.
Hi, Jay. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks for having me. So doing music, it's wonderful and fun doing creating music, performing it, having the whole interaction with the audience. Selling it, I find to be a vexation. It's, it's you know, it's not my thing. But you, however, are very good at promoting music. You've done it quite a bit. And I was wondering why, as a singer, songwriter, performer yourself, why bother helping promote other people's stuff other than just being a nice guy? <laughs> uh, thank you for saying that. Um, there are always singer songwriters looking for places to play. Mm. And believe it or not, there are places looking for singer songwriters. Stunningly so. Yes. And to be able to put them together, uh, and, and make it work. I mean, that is satisfaction for me. I get more satisfaction out of that than maybe playing a song or something like that. No kidding. Yeah. It, 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 why? Very satisfying. What, what, what parts of it? it, it completion, uh, uh, um, knowing that people who are other singer songwriters, as I am, uh, get a chance, get the opportunity to say, hey, there's somebody out there who wants our music, yeah. who likes us, who appreciates us. Maybe they're only appreciating us for purposes of tips or something like that. Yeah. But there's also exposure or maybe just the joy. A lot of people come to open mics. It's the joy of playing, the joy of making the music. And so yeah. putting that together with somebody who's looking for that. Well, it's like you're nurturing people too, because when you think about a lot of performers, um, one of the impulses for doing it is you get appreciation and validation for something that you do that makes people feel good, makes you feel good. Are, are you being like a healer, helping <laughs> connect that's, a cafe with some guy on a guitar? That, that's funny. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't see myself as a healer at all. Um, uh, just to have it come together uh -huh. is a great deal of satisfaction to me. And uh, I know. I mean, acceptance. Those are, my mom used to tell me about the five A's, you know, acceptance, appreciation, adoration. Um, I don't remember all of them, but I, follow you. I do remember that acceptance and appreciation were part of those. And, and goodness, we all need that, whether we get it from a spouse or friends or music gives a lot of self-appreciation back. And me getting, it's like watching your kids, uh, maybe ride their bicycle for the first time and the joy and the astonishment that they get this whole new chapter in their life opens up. Maybe that's not a good analogy, but no, know, I to, follow you. That's a, there is an astonishment and a joy when, when yeah. your, when your kid learns how to do things like that. Yeah. And, and well, your involvement with the West coast songwriters that mm -hmm. that has a lot to do with this particular subject because you're taking people, some of them whom are really accomplished and some of whom have just written their first song and they're very nervous mm -hmm. Um, do you feel almost like a shepherd as you're trying, cause you're connecting them with various, uh, outlets and places and events. Yeah, that's, that's a good observation and, uh, a kind of a good question too. I don't know that it's a shepherd as much as, um, everybody who has been, or who is a singer songwriter started at a certain level, yeah. started at a certain place. We didn't all just come right out and be stars and stuff like that. So yeah. going through the learning part, going through the learning part and knowing that there are people there who are supporting you, who know that, you know, you're not really great on guitar or you're not really great singing or you're not really great songwriting, but there are people there. There's a group there who's going to support you who's going to nourish you, who is going to say, it's okay, pat you on the back when you fall down and say, it's all right, get up and, and maybe you ought to try this, uh, make suggestions, um, help them uh, along the way so that they feel encouraged, so that they're not afraid, mm -hmm. you know, so they're, they're willing to come back and try again to strive and to grow a little bit. So, now, and, can, and, and connecting some of those artists as they, as they become better, Connecting them with places to play uh, uh, could make you feel kind of like a Bengali or something. It's a, the, you know, you're making things happen. It's a control thing. It's a, it's a, it's also kind of a power. How do you? 
uh, keep control of yourself so you don't let your ego go out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Um, could be my uh, background, my training. Uh, I have a master's degree in psychology. Ah, so, uh, yes. So that kind of helps a little bit. Um, I, don't, I don't see that. A good thing that you mentioned ego. I think the essence of how this works best is if my ego is not involved. If I can mm. withdraw my ego completely out of that and allow the parts who are there, the people who need to hear the sound and the people who are doing the sound, the making yeah. the songs are, are left to their devices, left to get together, left to get married, left to meet left. Mm -hmm. If they're, and I'm not involved in that because I'm not in it as a business. I do it as a friend. Yeah. So, and I know a lot of singer songwriters. So, sure, and, and we know professional promoters too. That's a whole, that's a whole other way of approaching it. We're you're doing it uh, more on a community level, like with the Napa Music Festival when you were doing that. Yes. Um, yes. And that was for a really good cause too. Yes. Uh, funding uh, music in schools. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, would you ever consider doing that as a national professional pursuit or is that getting too serious? Um, I, I don't think I would want to get back into that. I, I'm getting a little long in the tooth for that. Mm. Uh, if I was a younger man, I probably uh, would dive right back into it because yeah. music, music draws me uh, wherever it's at, uh, especially the folk sound that has been with me since since it really became popular uh, in the 60s. So. How do you promote folk now in a, in a world that where Beyonce rules? Yeah, it's kind of very interesting. Uh, most of the folk artists that I'm aware of are all independent or indies. Mm -hmm. um, and, and no matter where you go in the country, from the East Coast to the Midwest to Texas Sound, uh, out on the West Coast, uh, there the... Uh, they're all independents. The folk people, most of yeah. them are, are independents. And they're going through uh, Indiegogo or one of these things online to raise funds for their CDs. They're traveling around, many of them in their own transportation, uh, yeah. traveling around because they can't afford to fly or anything like that. Just hip-hopping across the country. What's so. the best way to, to get the word out for you know a folk gig? Because a lot of the artists that we know... Uh, you have some pretty good followings. Oh, yeah. It, it, you can't just throw something up on Facebook, expect everyone to see it. Yeah. Uh, well, there are two ways. One, uh, I guess the major way is online. Um, mm. Set up a website. If you set up a website as an artist, and when you perform, you get people to sign up, put out a sheet, sign up for my website. You put for, out an invite. Yeah. In, and that way it gets their attention. They click on it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It, it, it's, Real different from the old mimeograph oh, tape on a phone pole. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having the kids run around the neighborhood. <laughs> sure. Tacking things up on doors and stuff like that. Yeah. Was it yeah. The, it, it, in a way, though, there's a similarity because you're still trying to make an interpersonal connection with someone and, uh, you know, hoping that they know what you're talking about. Yeah. David Maloney, a, a, a wonderful musician, uh, uh, he's going to be posting to a different audience than, uh, you know, th a thrash rock band. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. So how do you find the right people to send your stuff to? Well, I, you know, it's uh, after uh, an artist has performed at a certain venue, yeah. that venue then gets put on that artist's list. Yeah. So that artist, maybe the following year or every two years, will check with that venue to see if, uh, they're still hiring and when they might be able to play. So the artists who have been performing for a while, they have lists of places to call. Uh, you could start on the East Coast or West Coast and work yourself across the country, mm -hmm. uh, literally by by doing that. Uh, we had several at the music festival who did. I asked Chuck Brodsky once uh, how he managed to make it out there. He said, well, I just go to these spots, play here, I'll play in, in Kentucky, I'll play in Texas, I'll play in Michigan, I'll, you know, and he kind of works his zigzags his way across the country. And it was really interesting uh, as he was explaining it. You know, that opened up a whole, gosh, I didn't think you could do that. But, you know, 
Well, you can wear yourself out, too, if you're playing at one place all the time. Oh, yeah. You want to oh, vary yeah. it up. Yeah, 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 it yeah. It kind of yeah. reminds me. I, I used to busk in London. Oh. That's when I was <laughs> really young. Uh, and, and the subways, I'd go in the subways in the morning and come out at night, spending about eight hours going around. And you'd book yourself at the various pitches. You wouldn't want to stay. And they call them a pitch because you pitched down your guitar case. Don't want to stay there too more than an hour or so. Everyone gets bored. Or the, the same guy. You want to change it up. And then... Anyway, it, it kind of reminds me of hopscotching your cafes and your clubs as you go. Uh, uh, now, nationally, uh, uh, well, actually, for your for your own singing and songwriting, how do you promote your gig as opposed to promoting someone else's gig? Well, I don't do much promoting on myself uh, because I don't play m much, but um, I would promote others online generally. I mean, yeah. just use the tech that's available promoting it online or word of mouth. Um, and you know, on Facebook, if you have people who have contacts with, they have their own groups of people. If yeah. you have three or four, you might wind up with 30 or 40 or 300 or 400 people ultimately are getting, getting the word. When I get invites from other musicians, boy, I get them. <laughs> I get tons of them every day. It'll say invited, how many are coming? How many yeah. maybes? You know, the, the invites usually are in the three, four, five hundred. So you're really kind of getting the word out. That's like electronically going up and tacking notices on the poll. Well, it, but that brings up another thing, too. I, I get tons of invites, too, and I'd like to go to them all. Yeah. Get, I, yeah. I probably get, I don't know, five a day sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, yeah. Surges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't you feel bad when you don't go yeah. to a gig that someone's invited you to? Yes. They've invited you to my birthday party. I'm not going. You know, it's, it, it's kind of a, a evoking of that. Yeah, I feel uh, like they're they're saying, you're my person. You're the one of my fans. Nobody else's, just mine. Yeah. And, 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 and I feel that initially, and then I realize, well, that's, they must also realize that there are other artists who are also promoting, sure. and, and that you can't go every place or be every place all the time. Yeah. What are your favorite places to, uh, to try to connect people in, in the, in Northern California? What's the, what are the best regions? Uh, well, you know, the North Bay, yeah. uh, where I'm at is very, um, active with music. So there are many venues in the North Bay and also uh, where you're going to be, uh, performing at you're, Give oh, yourself a little in Berkeley, yeah. In Berkeley at the uh, Monkey House. Uh, Freight and Salvage used to be a really good place for indies, but now they've kind of gone upscale a little bit. So they're booking, you know, Judy Collins or they're, they're having David Crosby is going to be there. Yeah, uh, they want people with the longer uh, 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 audience lists. Guaranteed yeah. full houses. Yep, yep. Yeah, which is great. But, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're uh, uh, coming up or you're, you know, you're just emerging. Um, that kind of cuts that place out. It does. It uh, really cuts it out. Although they do have, uh, they have one night a week, a month, usually for an open mic. Right. And open mics usually are where the beginning artists or the up and coming artists uh, should be going to at least get name recognition or get noticed by other musicians and artists. Wow, you really played. I really like that. You, you want to co-write with me or, you know, you want to go here or you want to go there. or Maybe we can, you know, I'm, I'm heading over to uh, Into the Beginning in Katati. You want to come over there or uh, one of those places. It's so. your meet and greet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and uh, I don't know. I, I find it sometimes fun to drop in on those uh, because you see old friends and Everyone gets to try out a new song, and yeah, and and, that, and, and you get to you know, well, kind of shill about what your next show is. <laughs> yeah, and some of those places have will offer an opportunity if a, if they think an artist is good enough, they'll offer the artist an opportunity to come and play for money. Yeah, so and yeah. that's really good. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Is it easier today than it was, uh, say, twenty years ago to oh, get the word out? No, it's it was. Oh, to get the word out. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's probably easier today, but to actually do the performing and stuff, it was easier, I think, back then. And why is that? Well, there was, there was not that much competition. Mm. There was not that many people uh, struggling or, or trying to find places to play. There were more places to play and 
not as many artists today. It seems the market seems kind of flooded. Almost everybody. Um, oh, it seems amazing. You get everyone from young people up to, to old, older people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and who can actually play. Yes. Can actually put on a show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, I don't know. It, 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 with the advent of DJs and, uh, and more uh, in-house music, it, it seems like uh, live music uh, declined from where it was, say, you might have to go 30 years back or so. But it, what do you think? Is there more live music to, to, to be booked or less? Well, I think in the older days, definitely more. Um, I was listening to uh, Doug Jane on KRCB. Yeah. Uh, had Eliza Gilkison in there. They're having their fundraising Terrific. now, yeah. and she was commenting on that very thing that you just mentioned. And she said it was much easier back then. Much easier. It was easier to book. It was easier to travel. It was uh, uh, there weren't as many bands. There weren't as many groups, and. Um, there tended to be a, a kind of a smaller grouping of musicians who made the rounds. Now, like you said, gosh, they're it's all over the place, and they're coming out of the woodwork, and they're all ages. I mean, yeah, eight years old playing a, a ukulele and doing doggone good ukulele too. Sure, <laughs> yeah. you know. So it's 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 pretty amazing out there. Yeah, and the, and the 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 opportunities to play live. I used to play weddings. You know, that was pretty good money back oh, yeah. in my in my twenties yeah. in particular. Still, there's still don't <laughs> if you there get was, a chance, go back. <laughs> oh, it's I mean it's still fun. I mean, now you do the uh the music when they're walking down the aisle, but when yeah. it comes time for the dance floor, a lot of times people just book a DJ instead. Yeah. Uh I used to play in Australia with a, a duet mate of mine and uh we used to walk into pubs and he'd pull the cord out of the uh out of the jukebox say you want this you want real music that's and right they'd either go yeah or they'd kick us out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it to some extent it feels today like there's 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 still some of that tension are you gonna have the canned stuff or are you can have real live hmm. uh, uh I, is live music better than the canned stuff you can calibrate the canned stuff more closely to what you want uh how do you sell live music instead of a dj gosh i don't know uh I guess it depends on uh, if the people have, if they've made a CD, if there's some way, hey, if you really like these guys, you ought to try, you ought to hear them. Here's a CD or go on YouTube or here's their website or check them out. And I think many venues are checking out artists that way. Uh, before oh, yeah. They, you can't just show them. up yeah. and with your guitar and audition. You have to have some product already out there for them to, to, to look at. Sure. And that's sure. a that's also an important part of promotion as well, isn't mm -hmm. it? You have yeah, to have something is. so they can leave. They don't want to buy a sight unseen. Nope, nope. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. Yeah, it's pretty, but it's it's dynamic when it comes together. It's just like exciting. I remember at the music festival, we used to we used to go to Folk Alliance wherever it was every year to book talent. And when we got back, Alan Arnapole, who was the producer. Uh, and I would get back and we'd go, we have a dynamite three-day lineup of talent. Yeah. We're going to love listening to this music. And the people are going to love listening to this music. And we hardly ever got to hear any of the performances because we were running around. You were so busy. Putting out yeah. fires and stuff like that. But you so, still felt good about booking it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was just, it wasn't so much watching the artists perform that we might be interested in booking, but... It was the actual getting them to agree to come and play. Yeah, we'd love to come and play Napa Valley Festival, uh, blah, 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 and agree yeah. on, on money and everything. And it's, God, it was, what a thrill that was. Well, I'm so glad was. there are guys who like the salesmanship like you. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming. Okay, thanks, right. Kevin. Thanks for having me. Like to try me out a life in the stars. My friends all say I need a place to wear out my heart, so I'm moving to Mars. You know, this life has been crazy. Sometimes I think I'm not really here. 
Every time I turn around, another friend is going down, and I can't see her face for the tears. So I'm moving to Mars. Yeah, I think I'd like to try me out alive in the